I'm Saran Fox. I'm Dan Watanabe. And, and I'm Michael Gonzalez. And this is Dan and Saran Take on Hollywood. And today we're going to be talking about the movies and TV adaptations of Stephen King. Mm. And the, part of it is because of the recent release of Dark Tower mm -hmm. and the upcoming It. Mm -hmm. And just because it's always fun to create controversy and Stephen King is a novelist whose film adaptations have definitely generated controversy. Uh, let's start with Michael. Michael, what is uh, your favorite Stephen King adaptation? Oh, oh that's easy. Uh, the original It. The first half, the part one. I don't, I, much like a lot of people and, and Saran forgets the fact that Godfather 3 doesn't exist, <laughs> I forget the part two doesn't exist. What's the story? Is it about the clown? So, yeah, so, so the, the thing is, Essentially, it is a killer demonic clown chasing mm -hmm. down children, uh, and of course they're trying to defeat this thing or, or kill it. Um, the great thing about it is, and and this is actually, I think helps with the story, is that they don't they never explain or or tell you what it is, what he actually is. That it's it's shrouded in mystery. There's no it's just it's just. This. Do we ever see him? No, no. Of course you see it. No, yeah. no. You see it all the time. It's Tim Curry playing playing the. Uh, but the villain. it is the clown. But it yeah it so it refers to the clown. Because uh -huh. there's no name for it. It's just oh, a see. thing. It's just a, right. a demonic clown okay. taking out kids. Um, I have my own theory as to, as to what I think it is, but I mean, I'll go get into that in later. But as far as for the film, that's my favorite because I always have this story, and I, I told Dan this, I think, a couple times. Um, I, was, I was probably like 12 years old. <laughs> it was about bedtime, <laughs> and I saw this commercial for this t TV show coming on. Oh, it. It looked amazing. I'm like, that's what is that? Like, I'm 12. Oh my god. My mom saw that. I'm like, nope, nope. You're not seeing that. Go to bed. Okay, cool. Went to bed. Waited till eh, about midnight when it was showing, and she went to bed, and then popped in to go see it. I didn't sleep for about two days. Yeah. After that, that's fine. I, I would be the first to admit that. But it changed my life because it was from that yeah. moment that I went. Number one. I want to write. I want to do films. I want to do this. Whatever this is, I want to do this. Ah, so it inspired and it you. It inspired me. Number one, number two, especially horror. Ah. That's that's when I knew I loved the ah. genre and I knew I loved this stuff. So, uh, unfortunately, yes, Stephen King is responsible for that for There's, my downfall. You know, your you the love of horror has something to do with um, enjoying being scared. Yeah, because I hate clowns. Uh, yeah. I hate clowns. And so, like, you're facing your demons yep. in a way. Yep. Yeah, and then Did the hatred of clowns come first. Or first, first okay. clean clowns, then then. That it. is a lot of people. But it didn't help. That, clowns that are movie scary. did not help. Because <laughs> I remember going to the, the circus a couple times with my family and just going, nope, I can't do this. Nope, this, whatever they're doing, I can't. Nope. Have you read a lot of Stephen King? Yes. Uh, so <laughs> we'll get into the Dark Tower later. But yes, uh, big fan of the Dark Tower series. Uh, did read it. Did read uh, Carrie and what was the other one? The Stand. So those are those are kind of. I don't think I, I've ever read any Stephen King, but I will mm -hmm. um, mention that I asked um, someone who's not in the business, mm -hmm. um, someone who I don't know how often he goes to, to, to movies, um, a, a civilian, so, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I asked him yesterday, I said, what's your favorite movie? Mm -hmm. And you know, when you're always put on the spot, even though you have a long list, and he thought for a bit, I said, Star Wars, and he said, meh, yes, and then he got very quiet and... Um, oh, he thought about it. He thought about it, and mm. he was doing something, fixing something in my home, and so I thought he was focused on his, wor on his work, and I really didn't want to bother him. And um, he very quietly said, Shawshank Redemption. Yep. And I totally got that this was a movie, this was a story they that like resonated it. on so many levels for so many people, it means a lot to a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know. And so I'd like to, to, to talk a little bit about Shawshank, your experience of Shawshank, and of course you, mm -hmm. Dan. Mm -hmm. um, f for me, it's, uh, it works on so many levels because it, it's, uh, it's, about, it's about redemption. It's about someone wrongfully accused who makes yep. the best of things. It's yep. about friendship. It's about yep. loyalty. And it's about supreme intelligence because what Tim Robbins does, mm -hmm. how someone who thinks of everything mm -hmm. and you know, in the end, these, these two men are, are, are reunited. We know they're going to be mm -hmm. reunited. Mm -hmm. and, and I love in the end that they don't show them yep. being reunited. Or maybe they do. Maybe he see, does he see him on the beach? I don't, uh, don't they approach Actually, each other? 
Do you it's remember? been too many. No. Yeah. So I we're to, anticipating. We oh, know what's. We're, we we're know, getting a shaken head. Yeah. Now. Our okay. producers, you know, under, you know, knows better than us. And so for me, you know, it's uh, it's got very few women, if any, in it. Right. It's a prison film, mm -hmm. and it's absolutely mesmerizing and brilliant and brilliant brilliantly done. Uh, Frank Frank, what's his last name? Bre Darabont. Darabont. Mm -hmm. Did a wonderful job at adapting it and directing it. It's a mm -hmm. so you can see the labor of love. What's your take on it? How did it I affect think, you? No, it was great. I, I love Shawshank, and mm -hmm. I think it's the for me what it represents is the ultimate survival, like yeah. how to like how to survive in prison. Well, at least in that time, anyway, in that mm -hmm. era. I don't know if it works today, but but in that era specifically, that time. Um, so yeah, so I, and and Robbins is fantastic, of course. I think we're all inv always invested in a character who's been wrongly accused. Yes, like in the Wrong yes. Man, the Henry Fonda, mm -hmm. the, the Kitchcock film with Henry Fonda, where the, we have this um, mixture of anger on their behalf and then hope that somehow it will be resolved, mm -hmm. you know, in, in their favor. And Dan, your take on Shawshank? Yeah, for me, Shawshank Redemption was one of the best movies of the 90s. Mm -hmm. And it came up out of nowhere. Mm. Because when you hear it's Stephen King, yet it's not horror, when you hear of a lot of the stuff that it had as its, as its detriments, mm -hmm. I'm surprised it was even made. Because given the way a lot of Hollywood operates today, it, had, it, it would be one of those things where I can actually see someone say, we're not going to make it because it doesn't Oh, it wouldn't. Quite, I don't think yeah. it does. What's think it the would demographic get made today? That's a good yeah, question. it doesn't doesn't quite fit. Right. Same with yeah. Stand by Me. Yeah. Oh, Those are yeah. two really outside of the norm of Stephen King stories. The right. things yet that you would amazing. say yes, and, and, and yet they're amazing. they're I believe two of the best adaptations yep. mm -hmm. and well remembered. Yeah. Yes. My, my own favorite adaptation was Carrie. And, and, and of part course, of it is of because why well, am I not surprised? Uh, well, well, also it's because it was it's the first one. It's a freaking jello. It's a jello. It, it was it was the first one I saw, and and it was I, I was in Japan at the time, and it was a mind blower because you know I'm 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 I was the age that the character was supposed to be, uh, and I was also bad in sports. I was also feeling like I was a complete outsider, and I related to her. I wished, and 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 I was like, yeah, I would burn down the school. That that would be a lot of fun. Okay. And and I mean I had an experience in, in okay. the Boy Scouts that made me sufficiently, um, uh, shall we say, not prone to liking the Boy Scouts at that mm. time, uh, to where to where when our troop house burned down, I felt very satisfied, even though I had nothing to do with it. I have to say, <laughs> um, and, and when I saw Disclaimer. Carrie, when I saw Carrie, yeah. I understood it. And what I loved about it is it did not compromise on right. the. On, on the relentless brutality, it was almost like watching an Italian neorealist movie, like Shoe Shine, because she's got this crazy ass mother. She's she's stage hated mother. by the school. Could be a stage mother. Mm -hmm. The the people who are nice to her, she feels they're betraying. And Betty Buckley ends up dead. The the one person who's sympathetic to her, she feels mistakenly is not on her side, and she kills her. It and and you had a young John Travolta in it. Mm -hmm. um, That's right. How, now in the end, at the prom, she. She lays waste, right? She lays oh, waste, yeah. and, and how, they did it for no money. And what's the what's the last scene? Remind the me. The last scene is where is is where you have Amy Irving pre getting married to Steven Spielberg and taking almost all of his money when he cheated on her. Uh, you have Amy Irving having a nightmare that she's going to the grave to leave a uh, to leave a bouquet for Carrie, and you have the cross, and you see that even in death she's not appreciated. Carrie White burns in hell is what's written on the cross, mm -hmm. and she puts the flowers down and a hand reaches out and grabs yeah, her. That's the and, and it's a great, great ending it's great. and, awesome. and, and uh, it's a, uncompromising. Yeah, it, very it, Nightmare on Elm Street. I, it, did it was Nightmare? Brian De Palma at his best. It's wonderful. You know, yeah, as they say, well, yes, awesome because you're right, it was uncompromising mm -hmm. and, it, and it showed, you know, it's almost like she had these powers and she didn't have to use them but she had no choice in yes. a way. Mm -hmm. She had no choice and we've all, it's like the ultimate revenge Revenge film. I, I have not seen a movie that absolutely nailed how nasty, nasty. high school can be, <laughs> and 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 how terrible, uh, how terribly yeah. people can be treated, mm -hmm. and and how. Uh, and, and this was before social media. People getting yeah. bullied on absolutely. Facebook and all. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there've always been bullies. It's it's yeah. like my thing is is if if there are bullies out there, teach your kids how to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. take down a bully if you have to. Mm -hmm. um, this was be this was. She, that was her karate. That yes. was her, 
you know, martial art. But, that was her way yes, of dealing. Unlike the Karate Kid, she doesn't win. Yeah. But she does. I mean, she, yeah, she, she gets rid of the whole Okay, so you it's, think it's, in the end she, yeah. she's dead, right? Does she die in the conflict? She is dead. She is yeah. dead. She yeah. dies yeah. in the... Okay, mm -hmm. so that's kind of awesome. They really, they killed the person who... She killed the person who was sympathetic, then she dies, mm -hmm. and then Amy Irving, who was one of, like, the social girls... Yeah, she's, who, the, she's the social girl who actually mm -hmm. had... An, uh, who, who understood how, how, how horrible she had been to her during the plug it up scene. And so and, we're thinking, oh, okay, this is redemption. Uh -huh. This is she feels bad. She wishes she could do it over again. Poor Carrie's gone, and she goes, and a hand comes out. That I remember that yeah. now. That is absolutely... And scary and unexpected. And, and, and Piper Mori, th there's that outrageous moment when when her mother's coming at her trying to kill her and she's got this demonically ecstatic look on her face right and then Carrie gets all of those knives and every every weapon in the house to to, to nail her so that the mother ends up like a Saint Sebastian uh, uh, um, uh, uh, idol and 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 while she's dying it looks like the mother's having an orgasm it's like Brian De Palma <laughs> you absolutely do not have any limits to what you were willing to do at that time awesome. what happened and and it 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 it's really um, uh, again it's not as well remembered as it as as perhaps it could be. But it's so referenced. Yeah. Yes. It is often oh, yeah. it's oh, referenced God, all, all the time. And and, um, yeah. and all you need to do is look at the cockamamie remakes of it. Yes. To see just how 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 good it was. I mean, you even had one remake for, which was supposed to be a pilot for a TV series where she and and Sue end up going off together, and I'm like, oh lord. That's okay. Awesome. That's, what's another one? What's another one? Uh, the Shining. Ah, let's talk. Yeah, let's talk. Now, the, the Shining. <laughs> when I first saw it, I hated it because I just read the book, and you know, again, I was 17 years old, and and so I was very into being David O. Selznick and and how he said, oh, you know, when you have a work of art, you have to do it directly, and and I felt that the movie was a travesty. Now I've seen it since in my dotage, and now I absolutely love it. I think it it it. It, it is a perfect visualization of of the internals of the book. That that mm. sense of, of of encroaching psychosis. That that mm -hmm. sense of mm -hmm. is this a real haunting or is, or is he, he insane? Is is yeah. this another Henry James type thing? Yeah. And and of, of, of course mm. Jack Nicholson's performance, which uh, is on one on the safe side of Faye Dunaway and Mommy Dearest, yeah. is still <laughs> so out there. And, and plus, you have all those theories that have been associated with the movies, including that documentary about it, where it goes over some of the theories, including the one that, oh, well, this movie is actually Kubrick pointing out to the audience that he staged the moon landing. And, and it's, it's great. <laughs> the fact that you can have a movie made 30 years after the original film about different interpretations of it speaks yeah. to how yeah. iconographic okay, it was. Okay, I will, yeah. I will chime I in, mm -hmm. and I, I have only seen pieces of it. I've never seen it. Uh, uh, I probably have an obligation to see it mm -hmm. because it just, every scene I saw just turned me off and, and it scared me, but not in a good way. But I think I probably need to sit down and, and see it. And also, I would like to make a comment that people have these theories about the moon landing. and all, They just don't have, as a manager of mine once said, some people don't have enough to do. You know, mm -hmm. so there's that. And, and what about you? What was your take on The Shining? Oh, oh so I love The Shining. I was yeah. going to actually comment on that. So, so I love The Shining. I think it's fantastic. I haven't changed. The only thing that's changed about my opinion is I think it's gotten, as I've seen how the sausage is made, so to speak, and the fact that it took six months to, to film the, the, the damn elevator blood scene or whatever, because he just kept going yep. over and over on it. I think that's hilarious. Uh, and he's just crapping out money mm -hmm. on that. But it came out fantastic, so it's okay. Have you ever uh, seen the TV movie remake that Stephen King himself directed? I have not. I refuse, to, I refuse to watch. He directed other, it? Yeah, yes. I refuse to watch that. That's why yeah. when you look at it, there's like no safe cover for it. And I know this is a terrible thing to say, but Stephen King should never have lost that 50 pounds and gotten off heroin if that's what it did to his talent. Because, mm -hmm. because that, that relentlessness that's in his early works is, uh, t t to me, who had read his books in, in, in order as they were coming out, and, and I was really anxious for each book to come out. It, it, he lost that, that intensity, and he started becoming almost preachy. Mm. You see the hints of it in The Stand, and you see the hints yeah. of it in Dance Macabre, which is, by the way, the best book written about horror movies in the horror genre mm -hmm. in general, even though it's now kind of out of date. Did he write The Dead Zone? Yeah. Yeah. Dead Zone. I love that movie. Yeah. 
I, I absolutely love that movie. Mm -hmm. There was a, an early Christopher Walken, and of course, open to parody, because when he was on Saturday Night Live, mm -hmm. he did that thing, the, yeah, he said, the, you're this, going to have yeah. a tuna sandwich for yeah. lunch, and yep. it's going to, you flat tire on the way home, yep. or whatever. But that, that was also another great adaptation. And, and the secret remake, or whatever, if you will, of The Shining, which was uh, the more recent film, the Chris, uh, with Chris, Pratt, Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence, the film in space, I forgot what it was, the, the title. That was Travelers, Travelers mm -hmm. Shining, D Shining, direct, direct, and it was awful, terrible. So, so, yeah, it's- uh, Hollywood, please stop remaking things. Yeah, secretly please. remaking, huh? I'm sorry, Passengers, excuse me, Passengers. passengers. Please stop Se remaking Yeah, stop, things. not only remaking, rebooting, but secretly remaking, or trying to remake. <laughs> It's like, stop it. And while it is true that there are only 20 stories and it's all in the execution, mm -hmm. the problem is, is that the execution is so, uh, so often mm -hmm. terrible. I would like to also mention Misery, which oh. is a, a, a film, uh, I love the way the film, that's Rob Reiner, right? Yes. And yeah. I can't remember who wrote the screenplay. Oh, yeah. Who, but who it's, I don't remember it's, who wrote it. it's uh, so very well cast. They kind of cast Jimmy Conn a little bit against type because he was mm -hmm. Sonny Corleone. He's this, you know, the gambler, mm -hmm. and he plays a writer. And of course, as we know, he gets stuck in a snowstorm with a crazy, I crazy think that fan. Adds to it, though. That's great. Yeah, but that he's adds such a to tough, he's yeah, such tough a tough guy, guy. the yeah. tough guy, and the encroaching and re the real realization of the insanity. And then we're on his side. You know, it's classic. We're, we're we're hoping and praying that he is able to escape, and he almost does. And she makes it worse, and she's crazy. Yeah. And then finally, when he does, it's that it's exultation, it's triumph when he when he kills her. And then and then the, then the movie kind of goes like this. It's it, it rising action, rising action bang, climax, and then it goes down to here, like, isn't Lauren Bacall his agent or something? Mm -hmm. And I don't remember how it ends in the end, but I love the way the movie just went back to, like, dinner at... He, he has a meeting with he has a, his, He's a lunch meeting or something. And, 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 and the, the waitress comes up and says, I'm your biggest fan, and he, he, he has a flash that it's Kathy Bates, and then he goes on. It's... It, yeah. It, yeah. 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 Uh, it's... You see Kathy Bates in it, mm. and her performance is so memorable. Oh, you dirty birdie. You know, yeah, all yeah, of yeah. Her, her little phrases. And have you seen the YouTube video where you have uh, where you have someone going into a bookstore and trolling them as if she's the character in ah. Misery and saying, and saying, do you have the new Misery book and Misery Chastain? And she's acting like Kathy Bates. And you oh, see wow. the poor clerks in the store going, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> it's, I mean, I don't know whether it was staged, but it's uh -huh. hysterical. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's so, it. so speaking of, of horrible, horrible interpretations and remakes, uh, The Dark Tower came out recently, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you've seen I it. I don't know anything about it. You've seen it? Okay. I do so, know it didn't get good reviews. Uh, yes. That uh, Elba got good reviews. I read a review that said yes. McConaughey wasn't good, that Idris Elba was yes. good. So here's, here's what I'll say. So, so as a big fan of that series, because it's a series of books. It's not just one. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's about eight books total. Wow. Or eight or nine. I forget. Uh, nine. I've, and, and what's it yeah. about? This was after and I so, unfortunately so, stopped reading. So the Dark so. Tower is essentially, it's a couple things. It's, it's at, at its basis, at its core, it's a gunslinger chasing down the man in black. It's, it's, a, it's a cowboy chasing down the bad guy. In, in the Old West? In, or what? In, in, well, okay, so, in so it is in the Old West, but it's a dystopic, futuristic kind okay. of thing okay. where it's alternate, alternate like West dimensions. Like West and kind of a yeah. West, yeah. Uh, there's no robots, but, but yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it's similar to that. So, so he's chasing after this guy who has killed his father and a bunch of people and whatever. So um, in, in the book itself and in the series, and then of course there was also graphic novels that were adapted from this, uh, it, it's phenomenal. It's a great story. And then in that story, it actually encompasses other references to other, other books and, and that King has written. Mm -hmm. So it, it references like Langoliers. It references, um, oh God, what was the... It, it there's all these mm -hmm. references and and so it forces you. It's genius actually as a writer. It forces you to read those other okay. books okay. to have to be oh, able to get his own publicity the, machine. Exactly, <laughs> it's genius. But it's but it's it's not overt. I mean, it's it's just yeah. well written and well done. Now here's the problem with the movie. Uh, like I said, there's books and then there's graphic novels that were adapted from the books. Right. The film is a bunch of cliff notes. That were feel that feels like cliff notes taken from the graphic novels. Ah, oh, so, so it's like, so it's like some, when you duplicate yeah, something and you've got fifth it's generation a or something. Xerox did, of a did, did Xerox. Xerox feel yeah. like it was a mini series that was cut down, like like yeah, it was, it was just like highlights. Hours that been, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all it was. And and the worst part, this is because I love Andres Alba so much as an actor. This is what grinded my gears so much. 
they made the gunslinger because the, the main character, the protagonist, the gunslinger is him. Is is him? And he plays, he plays the character, bad guy. And McConaughey's a bad guy. But in the books and in the in the graphic novels, whatever, the gunslinger is like an ultimate badass. He's, he's uncompromising. He's like, I'm gonna get this guy, dirty no Harry. matter what. He's dirty Harry. They made him soft. They feminized the him. Imagine very that. much so. Oh God! Very much so, and that angered me to the point where I, I, om- <laughs> if it wasn't free, because my boss paid for it, so I yeah. couldn't, I couldn't get up and leave. Yeah, if, you were gonna if leave. If it was me who had paid how money to go see this, so- I would have gotten up. How and did they soften him? Did he talk about his rough childhood? Was he? It was, w- it what was did they very, do? It was more of like, like he, like a victim. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, he killed my father, and oh. It's like, no, man, that's not what it is, so a they, revenge story. Did they take the anger out of him? Yes. Oh. That edge, the edge that, oh. that the books and, and the and the graphic novels had, they took not it away. Good. Not they good. They took it away. That made me so angry. And then, and to be fair, uh, on the McConaughey side, he wasn't that great a, a man in black. It just, it didn't really, I mean, yeah. he's okay. But was was uh, he too all right, all right, all right? He's too all right. He's too <laughs> McConaughey-y to believe him as the as that, because in and the he's books such a, as well. But he's such a good actor. That's, he could play a, he, a bad guy. But the man guy. in black is evil. He is and evil he, incarnate. I mean, that's and that's the director. Not that. That's the, well, I don't yeah, know. McConaughey's but not but that's person. also the director. That's true. That's, that's also why. you know how evil do you want me? You know. Yeah. No. My, he should he should have been. Uh, it, I, <laughs> hearkening back to another uh, Stephen King, I wish Tim Curry would have been the man in black. I think he could have pulled it off. Oh, yes. some other because he's like evil from the get go. Yeah. Some other some some other person, but. Anyone else? Anyone? Just evil, like evil. I can evil, see evil. Woody Harrelson playing that yeah, kind of role. Yeah, evil. That, yeah, Woody Harrelson. Especially now. So it took me out of the movie completely, and yeah. and and I had a friend who was sitting, I think right where you were, like sitting next to me, and the entire movie. I'm not kidding. The entire movie, because because he, he's a fan too. Yeah. When he's watching it, his reactions are just. <laughs> like what? Like he can't believe what's going on, and neither could it's I. But that, yeah. he had very physical, visceral reactions to it, and I did too. As well, I just, who, I was more internal. Who, who directed it? Who wrote it? It's a good question. I can. We can probably have somebody look that up. Um, it's, it's, but, it's that's so interesting when they yeah. take something that's so iconic and means so much okay. to so many people, I, I, and I've then they a, screw it up. I've got, a, I've got a weird question on this, and this is a little bit of an aside. Please, what's going on with Sony? I mean, they they, they screwed up. Uh, the the Ghostbusters mm-hmm. they they've messed up Passenger mm-hmm. this sounds like it was a mess up big time so so that, somewhere that, along I can't the even, line this I would have t- I would have taken Ghostbusters and Passengers over this I would watch both back to back over watching this that's how angry I was at the film I, I'm I'm just wondering what's going on I don't know there's something there's something wrong with their crea- with creative Denmark. vision yeah. you know who's developing yeah. who's who's green lighting things uh-huh. uh, are they filming re- what i find in hollywood a lot of the times as a as a story person and as a person who pays very close attention to, to the script mm-hmm. is that very often it seems to me they film revised first first draft mm-hmm. you know yeah. That they're rushing things into production, or they're not. Mm-hmm. They're saying, "Oh, we'll fix it in post," or, Ugh. as you say, no respect for the audience. Yeah, because that's, when what, you, that's because exactly you, what this felt do like. Do you think Aesop, when Zero he wrote, respect. when Aesop wrote the fables, he respected his audience because he knew he had to tell a great story with a moral? Yeah. You know, so what you with have are people yeah. telling kind of half half ass stories yeah. or adaptations, and you can say not respecting the audience. This is not good enough to go out. We have to make this better. Yeah. We need another draft. Let's bring in another writer. Yeah. They're Except not doing with, that. Ex- now this might actually be a physical production thing where where they were saying, well, yeah, the the script's kind of not so the the the, the girl the the the, the script is ah, is is, uh, is not so good, but we got to start. Uh, Start building the green screen. We've got to start building our, the, the. Excuse the me. Sets. Our producer just told us that uh, the director um, who directed Dark Tower, Nikolaj Arcel, same directed same one a as fabulous did. movie, a great adaptation, mm-hmm. Girl with the Girl Dragon with Tattoo. The so mm-hmm. hard edged, and from mm-hmm. what I gather, though I didn't read the book, very very uh, loyal to the um, to, to the original to, yeah. the, to the book. Yeah. So you wonder who was a. a First of that, of course, who's, who's above uh, and him who that, wrote and who yeah. wrote the script? That's yeah. what I want to know. Yeah. He wrote. He Sorry also wrote it, it and directed. He wrote and directed it. Oh, uh, that's why. Five of the cooks in the kitchen. That's why. And all uh, these. Okay. Oh, five cooks in the kitchen uh, and nobody. Uh, you, you know what? Okay. You know what they need? They need a Thalberg. Irving yeah. Thalberg. If anybody doesn't know, he was the the basis of the Last Tycoon. And we could go on. We could do three hours about how they can't adapt Fitzgerald and they should stop trying. Mm. Um, and he was uh, young and married you to Norma Shearer. You didn't Shearer. like Tender as the Night. Oh, Jason Robards and Jennifer Jones? No. And 
is he, he had this incredible story sense. He was brilliant at story, and he could help fix things and put out a great product. That's what they need. They need a yeah. Thalberg yeah. They for don't. me. <laughs> yeah, it was rushed. Uh, cliff Notes, it, it's just... And, and the worst part is it, it alienated the core audience, the people yes. who love this yes. stuff. Yes, It was like, what? Like we're all looking at each other like, because we've all read it or, or, or we're familiar with the work, and we're all looking at each other like, so what, do what you, is this? Do you think they might have, um, could they have run the script by some core audience members? Could they have brought some people? I would hope so. Do some focus I mean, groups? Geez, you would I don't think. know. Well, let's go on to a more pleasant subject, sure, sure, sure. which is Stand By Me. Oh, that's a great Which film. is also one of the great Fantastic adaptations film. of uh, Stephen yeah. King's work, which, which appeals to a very, very wide audience. Very wide. When I watched it with my sons when they were young, there are my children enjoying this and their father and I mm -hmm. getting the same. And, we, and a lot of times when you have children and you take them to the movies, the movies aren't so great, but you enjoy their enjoyment because they're your children and you love them. But when you can go to see a movie that you all enjoy, that's an incredible thing. Mm -hmm. What a great, great movie. Absolutely. But the movie also has the ghost in it, the ghost of, of, of River Phoenix. Yeah. So when, uh, when we're yeah. watching it, it has that extra level of melancholy. Today, but when you watch yes. it before he right, died. before that, yeah. Before he I saw died, it before he died as well. First yeah. of all, they captured, they did a good job, I think, with, um, uh, although I caution screenwriters about flashbacks and mm -hmm. going back and forth in time and voiceovers, that was done very successfully with the uh, Dreyfus character. Mm -hmm. And also, they captured the essence of being a young boy at that time. Yeah. Adolescence. The, and adolescence, up, yeah. you know, just preteen, and the older boys, Kiefer, Kiefer mm -hmm. Sutherland is the mm -hmm. older brother, mm -hmm. how mean boys can be to each oh, other, how God, physical yeah. they are, oh, yeah. and yet how dreamy young boys can be, and the different types of, you know, walking on the railroad track, you had the leader, you had the fat boy, you had mm -hmm. Will Wheaton, and so the, they, <laughs> they, right. captured, yeah. they captured the essence the of, of, of young boys, and as the mother of boys, I saw that, yeah. that it was, it was very honest, yeah. very, very honest. Yeah. It, was, mm -hmm. it was a lovely And very lady. iconic in finding the dead body. And, yeah. Yeah, and the great. song. Yeah. And the song, yeah. that great. beautiful song. Great. Yeah. I have great hopes for it. Because, oh, the new one! Yeah, uh, who's doing uh, it? Is it's a movie, it's, right? Yeah. It is. Yeah, who's doing I'll, I'll, it? I'll be honest that I I've been watching the new Blu-ray of the old mm -hmm. uh, TV version of it. Part one or part two or both? I've, I've, I just finished part one. Don't because don't, I don't go I on to part two. Just, just no, I haven't seen it since it was <laughs> first on. And I've got to say that yeah, it has a lot of late '80s, early early '90s itis about it, but it really has a lot of good scares. Same with mm -hmm. Salem's Lot. I, I recently watched that, and other than having to put up with David's soul, who hasn't passed the test of time that well, it, it, it really has a lot of effective things in it. Yeah. Who's doing, um, I think someone's researching that for yeah, us. I'm interested to know who's doing, who's writing and directing it. I believe it is a, uh, it's European. He is, oh, what does he do? Damn it. Is he Dutch? It's D Dutch or, or it's, it's a, um, the information uh, is being prepared it's, it's as, as we it's speak. It's coming, I forgot because who's doing I, it, but it looks phenomenal. Okay, yeah. oh, so it's Andres Muschietti. Is yeah. he the writer or the director? Director. Director. Yeah. And, and getting he's, information. he is Dutch, I believe, or, or he's isn't European. That a, is, sure. Isn't that Italian? Is he Italian? Is he Italian? Oh, yeah. he is Italian, sorry. Yeah. I know he's European. I just can't remember who, but um, he, uh, it, the trailers look phenomenal. Oh, that's the, good. The footage who's starring great. in it? Do we know? Uh, it, it's an unknown. The the oh. guy who's playing it is yeah. an unknown. He's yeah. he's not. He hasn't done a whole lot of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Put your hand up on it here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Who is it? But but I'm I'm looking forward to it because because one of the things about the TV movie is because it was shot in 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 the, in, in, in a time when most TVs were 25 inches or less. It, it's very bright, and, yeah. and, and, it, and it doesn't have that same kind of It had the TV atmosphere. lighting, that awful yeah. TV yeah. lighting, yeah, like uh -huh. a Columbo. Yeah. Not quite that bad, but it's, yeah. it's definitely yeah. not the, the smoothness that, that, that mm -hmm. we see in, in, in the stuff today. So I, I think this is one of those examples where it could actually be better. I and might even go with you possible. to see it, because I do love being scared. It looks, mm -hmm. it looks good. Yeah, it I, looks I do love really being, being scared, but I want an now, honest scare. Now, why did you dislike the second half? Of the, of the is it your Godfather? Movie. Is it I your Godfather why. three? It is my Godfather three. Yes, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. <sighs> Maybe this was me when I when I first watched it. Because when I first watched it, the part two, part one, and part two, um, I was much younger. So maybe that's part of it. But I have still seen it even now today, and I still don't like it. And it's because in the first half or the first part, 
you have these kids coming together. They they band together to take care of this thing and they defeat it. And, you know, whatever. Now they don't necessarily defeat it, defeat it like forever and ever, but they defeat it to where it doesn't come back like for a very long time. Um, but then it shows them, you know, years later mm-hmm. as an, as an adult. Um, and then of course it comes back for them, and then you know whatever. It's part of it is is the actors and the performances. I don't like it. It just it didn't come off very well. Um, John but Boy he, and uh, yeah. Richard Thomas. He, John Boy and and Three's Company just kind of yeah, it, 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 it doesn't, doesn't give you the uh, who it, would give the same feel to it. Oh, so we've got three writers, none of whom Emmy winners. Emmy winners. Emmy winners. Oh, Gary. Interesting. Not, yeah, it's Here's interesting. A ah, 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 that explains a lot. Ah, that Oscar, explains a lot. Yeah. Um, but the but with part two, I think what it is, it's just <laughs> <laughs> what it is. It's just um, it's seeing them as adults, and they've defeated this thing, and then you see them in this kind of weird, weak state now, uh, kind of dealing uh, with this thing now. It's they they deal with it in a very different way because it's as, as very kids, different from Carrie's as, hand yeah, coming it's, out. It's yeah, because ki- as kids, yeah, they were scared, and they were rightly to right. rightly so to be scared. And still taking this thing on, they're like, no, we we can't let this thing get us, you know, whatever. But then, as, as an adult, it's it's it, this weird sort of, yeah, they're scared, but it's 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 much more. I don't know how to explain it. Where where it's, you're not rooting for them. You're yeah. not rooting for them. I don't know yeah. how else to explain it. You just you don't root for them to defeat this thing. And it's almost like they're victims. And, and yeah. as kids, they know they see, did not. They and, did not act like that. And then to see all. people who are heroic then play yeah, the, then play play the, the victim, victim because like, because no. usually we see the victim the other way around. suddenly become heroic. And right. if you're going to flip that, it's got to have it's got to have an underlay of why right. and what's going on. And right. can they become a heroic again, or what? Right. What do they do to deal with their victimhood? Right. Because yeah. nobody likes a whiner, right. you know. And, and that's what it was. It was kind of whiny. Whining, Honestly. yes. And I, did, well, and I didn't like I, that. I remember that it was the last of those King books that I read before I, I kind of gave up on it. Mm-hmm. And the reason is because at that time I was looking at he and Anne Rice as, as writers who stopped being edited, mm-hmm. where, where they went from being these very terse, very suspenseful, very, very effective pieces mm-hmm. to just writing these sprawling books that yeah. seemed like you they know, weren't, they, they, yeah. they, they didn't have a book editor anymore. Mm. You know, part of me wishes that might, well, for a lot of reasons, and I know other parents can relate to this because I have elderly children. I, I, sometimes I wish my kids were really little and still needed me to accompany them mm. to the movies because there comes that day when they can go on their own and you stop seeing all the kid movies, better or for worse. But I think, because um, they love all these kind of movies, mm-hmm. I wish I had to take my kids to the movies because they saw, we, we censored very little, um, so that I could get to see so, so much of this because all these franchise films, I would be up to speed on all of them if my kids were seven and, and 10. Mm-hmm. But alas, you know, one can look forward to grandchildren. So mm-hmm. there you go. Exactly. Okay, go. well, it looks like our time is up. Time just flew by. Thank you yeah. so much, Michael Gonzalez, Thank for you. being our guest. Awesome as usual. Please like and subscribe to the Unscripted Network. I am Saran Fox. Dan Watanabe. And this is Dan and Saran on Hollywood saying thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.